Hello, this is Hypo Swords, and today we're going to be looking at this, the 1796 British Heavy Cavalry Sword. In particular, today we're going to be looking at a very common fake of this made by Universal Swords based out of India. Technically, this is a reproduction, however, we're going to be looking at a specific example which has been artificially antiqued by a fraudulent and dishonest seller. On screen now, you can see this falsely antiqued fake. We're going to go through a few of the signs that this is, in fact, a Universal Swords copy and not one of the originals, and we're going to have a look at an original as well, using photos mostly from the Royal Armoury. I've demonetized this video, regardless of the fact I don't have enough views to monetize yet, because it's only usable if you use it for non-commercial purposes. I consider this to be an educational video, and I hope you do too. Here you can see the source material used to make the fraudulent artificially aged copy. There are a few telltale signs that these are the same sort. We'll go into detail, but for the moment, let's have a look at the glaring similarities with the previous photo. Obviously, they're both attempting to be 1796 Heavy Cavalries. So before we go too far into the details, let's talk a little bit about what that is. The 1796 Heavy Cavalry was a straight-bladed single-edged sword that was fairly broad and had a hatchet point. It had a discard with a reinforcing plate, langets, and it had a grip that had two ears going onto the handle. On the topic of handles, let's have a look at the hilt on this sword. Here you can see the fake, or falsely antiqued, reproduction. There are a few notable things on the hilt here. The first thing to look at is the thickness of the steel used to form the backstrap. While this does vary on historical swords, the universal copy is particularly thin. In person this is very evident, however on photos it can of course be harder to discern. Compare this photo with the one provided by Universal Swords for Cult of Athena, and you can see that the same very thin steel is used for the backstrap. You'll also note that there's a significant gap between the backstrap and the leather-covered wood of the handle. This is a common problem of Universal Swords reproductions. Now let's have a look at an antique. While it's hard to see in this photo, the fit is much better, and the steel is significantly thicker. The langets are also tapered rather than straight, as you may have noticed they are in the reproduction. Here we can see the aforementioned reinforcing bar. You'll note that it is extremely thick on the reproduction and much thinner in the real life version. And here is the Universal Swords photo. If we go back and contrast that, you'll see that the one on the original is 1 to 2 millimeters thick, and the reproduction is about 3 millimeters. Here we can see yet another variation hilt style. You'll note that this has an upturned lip on the underside of the guard, which allows it to be quite stiff while maintaining a fairly low overall weight. You'll also note that on this hilt, the langets go both out towards the blade and in towards the handle, and this is not visible on any of the reproductions, including the Universal Sword. Now let's look at one of the most glaring signs that this is a reproduction. If you look at the inscription here on the spine, you can see that it has a very rough appearance. This is the fake antiqued version, and you can see that the uh, lettering is obviously inscribed with a rotary tool of some sort, a diamond bit on something akin to a dremel. These are done off of a stencil via replication. Here you can see the Cult of Athena photo of the Universal Swords copy, which has the exact same extremely rough appearance caused by using a rotary tool with a very hard diamond tip. I don't have an original inscription to show you here, but I can tell you that the technology to perform this did not exist at the time, so it's impossible for this to be real. Here we can see something that was possible at the time, stamping letters into a steel scabbard. However, you'll note that the maker on the inscription is not the same maker as the one on the scabbard. The blade will always be marked Runkle, and the scabbards for these are always marked Osborne & Co. Birmingham. While Osborne did exist, and Runkel did exist, the combination of the two is atypical and not seen in any originals. This is one of the glaring red flags that something is wrong here. There should not be this sort of mismatch. Here you can see that the same stamping, both in terms of font, size, location, and text, is on the Universal Swords copy, or rather reproduction. 
There's just a few quick tips for identifying a fake 1796. Now let's have a look at some beautiful images of real ones. You'll note that this one has an atypical tip. Rather than having a hatchet point, it's been ground down to be much finer. This is due to the fact that the hatchet point, while very effective at cutting, is quite poor at thrusting, which is something the heavy cavalry were rather fond of doing. Contrast that to the tip that's on this, the Universal Swords reproduction, which is the typical hatchet point. From this distance, you can't see what's wrong with it, so let me get you a closer image. You can see here that there is a pronounced spine, or rather flattened area, near the tip, and a secondary bevel on the Universal Swords reproduction. And you can also see that on the antique or fake version here. Let's contrast that to an actual 1796. Notice anything? That area is completely flat. There is no pronounced ridges and no secondary bevel. That area is actually quite thin on original 1796, whereas it's quite thick on the Universal Swords copy. As a result, the Universal Swords copy is quite heavy, more so than the 1796 already is, and it's quite a beastly sword to begin with. I hope this will save someone the trouble of buying what they think is an original, only to find out that it's a fake. If you have fallen prey to this, I always advise looking at the common reproductions, for example by Universal Swords. However, if you have fallen prey to this, please contact me, as I'd love to know who sold it, so I can add them to a blacklist on various forms. This has been a very sad bit of reporting by Ipo Swords. That's all for today. Until next time, stay sharp.